welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I suspect we've got another treat for you today. This is by the constructor Shy, and it's called Pato Pato. And I think this is the latest in her series of puzzles in which she's basically inventing new Sudoku techniques, it seems, by the week. Uh, and this is the latest invention. And basically, we're going to have to discover how it works. Um, so she's been creating puzzles that basically contain just one trick. So rather than having to do, you know, a new technique and then umpteen other difficult things, we just get presented with a puzzle that has a single trick to find. And if you find the trick, you can often beat the computer in the sense that the computer needs to do lots of esoteric guessing. Uh, and hopefully we won't need to if we can understand how the new technique works. So it's a, it's a lot of fun doing these puzzles, although I do find them a bit daunting because I'm very nervous in case I can't find the trick. I mean, what I will say about this puzzle is it has an extraordinary number of given digits. Um, you'll know it's become a bit of a running joke on Cracking the Cryptic that, you know, it's no longer that surprising for us to have no given digits in puzzles. But this puzzle we have got a lot of digits. There's 11 up there, 15, 23, 26, 30, 36 digits. That is an incredible number. I mean, I only have to fill in. What was it going to be? 40, what did I say? 36, 45 myself, uh, and we'll be good to go. Um, so it's, it's almost half done. Um, now, do I need to tell you anything before I read you the rules? The rules are not complicated today. I don't think so. Just if you do enjoy the content, please consider subscribing. We are very, very close now to 400,000 subscribers, which is a milestone we never even dreamt we would reach uh, a few years ago. So if you do enjoy what we're doing, please think about subscribing. We'd be most grateful and we might one day get up towards that magic number. Anyway, let's read the rules. Here we go. Normal Sudoku rules apply. There, I've said it. Um, do have a go. The way to play, of course, as always on Cracking the Cryptic, is to click the link under the video. And now I get to play Let's Get Cracking. Now, Mark suggested I do this one today, and he didn't tell me when he said that, that I needed to put it into a computer first, which has been the sort of uh, modus operandi for some of these puzzles before. So I'm not sure why that's the case. I seem to have loads of digits in in the outside rows and columns. Let's just go through though and see what we can find. One I think is a particularly bad place to start. It looks like one is, we've only got one one in the grid. What about twos? We have got more twos. So two in one of these cells. A two in one of these cells. A two in one of those cells. Threes, we have got loads of threes. Threes up here and up here. And that's all, I think, just this sort of X wing on threes left to place. So we've only got one four. Uh, so one and four seem to be the digits that we're, we're lacking in. Fives, we've got. I see anything there that's interesting. Not. Well, yeah, actually, I can pencil mark a five in box six. So I'm going to do that. Um, sixes. Oh, oh, I, got, I can get a digit. That's a six there, right there. That has to be a six. It's the only place a six can go. There are actually six, sorry, four sixes pointing at box eight of the Sudoku. And whenever you've got four, four of the same digit pointing at a box, you can always find that its position in that box. So that's a bit of a bonus. Uh, six has got to go in one of these cells. Um, and one of those two cells. Is that everything for sixes? I think so. Sevens. Sevens is a seven. So one, four and seven, the snooker maximum, are the digits that are very underrepresented. I don't know if that means we should or shouldn't be focusing on. Probably we shouldn't be. Uh, eight's got to go in one of those two cells in box eight. Nine. There are some nines. Look, I'm getting a lot of sort of pence. Ah, is that a two nine pair I've just discovered? Look, let's double check that. 
29. Yes, that looks good. So they can see these two cells in box four are the only places that two and nine can go in the box. So no other digit can now go into these, these two squares. And we know the rest of this box needs to have one, four, five, and seven in it. That might allow us to pencil mark more and no, <laughs> don't think it does. Bobbins. Um, okay, all right. So hang on, nine, that was our last digit, wasn't it? Right, okay, so that is no good. Or at least when I say no good, it's not It's not done enough damage. I'm just going to double check this column. One, four, five, and eight. So this square is only one or eight, this square here. That squares a one or a four. No, okay. Um, possibly then we are meant to look at these perimeter cells. They do. I mean, they do feel to me a bit. Oh, hang on! I've just noticed something about them. Hang on. The gaps in them are all ones, fours, and sevens. That's weird. Oh, that is weird. Right, okay, look at this. I just noticed the gaps in there. I should have probably spotted this instantly, but I didn't. Ones, fours, and sevens into all those squares, just, just looking at the, the digits that are missing. So we've been given the same six digits in column one, row one, row nine, and column nine, and that feels very peculiar. I'm actually gonna highlight these cells. We haven't got a swordfish. No, we haven't got a sword. I was just wondering whether we had a swordfish pattern, but we don't. That can't be a four, in fact. I'm just seeing there's actually a four in its box. We might be able to... That can't be a one. That can't be a seven. Right. So, so I'm now, I'm fairly convinced this means something. And these sort of, these are puzzles are almost studies. Um, that's what I found over the last few weeks. Um, and often you have to sort of obey your gut instinct. And my gut instinct is telling me that there is something about ones, fours and sevens we need to appreciate in this puzzle. Now the question is, what is it? And this is where it gets very tricky because obviously if this is a new technique, I haven't really, I won't have seen it before. I'm, I'm going to have to just understand what Shy has hidden in this. Ones, fours and fives into there. What is it I'm meant to be appreciating about this? Um, Sorry, and this this is where it could get very slow. One, four, six, seven. Here, this square's only got one and seven, I think. Four, six, and seven into those cells. One, three, four, and seven into column. That square's restricted. That can only be four or seven. This just seems to be every, there seem to be hundreds of cells in this puzzle that can only be ones, fours, and sevens. Two. Oh, I didn't spot this before, but it looks like two can only go in one of two places in the central box of the Sudoku. So I could have pencil marked those earlier. I don't think it helps, but I could have done it. Yeah, I mean, I want there to be, I want there to be a swordfish here. Because if you look at, we've almost got alignment. Although it's a bit broken up here. If that square sort of close to being a swordfish in the columns apart from this square what's this square got uh, this square can be one two four one two four or seven i think 
So that square isn't actually, it's not far away, it's just the two that, that pollutes it. And the same thing is going along, going on in the rows. You know, you've got you've got a li very very close alignment in columns one and four. You've almost got a swordfish there, but it, again, it sort of breaks down in this box. I don't quite understand that. I don't quite understand what I'm meant to be thinking. And apologies if you're all if you've all spotted it and you're all shouting at the screens. Um, this is <laughs> this, this is always the point of videos where I really really get flummoxed. Um, I'm flustered as a result of being flummoxed because I'm aware that probably I'm being a bit slow. Because um, if Ah, uh, what is going on here? This, I feel it's something to do with the structure of, you know, this row, this row, and this row. Or we could look at it alternatively, this column, this column, and this column. And there's something... breaking... Yeah, I mean, if oh, is that what I'm meant to think about? One second, come on. No, it's broken because that doesn't have to be a one. I keep thinking this square has to be a one, four, or seven. It doesn't have to be. If it had to be, If it had to be, ah, got it. I think I've got it. I think I have you now. Uh, it's just delicious. If this is right, hang on. I just need to think about this because I might be about to say something that is a load of claptrap. If, if you have, if that is true, if this is a true pattern, if this is weird because, it... oh yeah, yeah, okay, that is, oh, I'm being the world's most inarticulate man. I'm so sorry, but I'm just trying to get my head around this. I think I have almost got something. I think there is something going on with ones, fours, and sevens. But it's like, a, it's like a revolving swordfish type thing. I think. I think it all depends on this square. If this square, let's make that square blue. No, I don't want to make it blue. I'm going to make it orange. If that is a one, four or seven. Then either. So it's just, I just want to think about, let's just think about the digit seven just for a moment. If we think about the digit seven and think about the columns, then can't we argue that if we have one possibility is that this square is a seven, that is one possibility. But if this square is not a seven, then I do have a swordfish on sevens in those squares in the columns. And if I have a swordfish on these squares in the columns, that square there can't be a seven. And that logic, that logic iterates in the sense that I can just apply that logic to fours and I can apply that logic to ones. 
And if that's right, and I'm now thinking it is right, that square cannot allow those floating swordfishes to happen. In other words, this square is a two, and that is going to give me digits if that's right. So let's just do this slowly. Let's do this very slowly and check that this feels correct. So, what I'm saying is, and this is weird because it works exactly the same way in the rows as well. Let's start with what a swordfish is because that's going to be important. So what I want to imagine is, let's imagine that we're looking at sevens, but this square here is a four. Okay. Now, if we look at column one, column four, and column nine, you can see that the sevens in these columns are restricted to all of the colored cells. These eight colored cells have to, are the only places in those three columns that can contain the digit seven. Um, and we know how many, how many sevens are there in these eight cells? That's a good question to appreciate. The answer is three, because there's one seven in those three squares, there's one seven in those three squares, and there's one seven in those two squares. I'm assuming that this square is not a two, by the way, sorry, I should have made that clear. Um, so there are three sevens in these eight squares. And now I want to ask the facetious question, how many sevens are we expecting there to be in row one, row six, and row nine of this puzzle? And the answer is, of course, three. But if we know that there are three sevens in these cells and they appear in those three rows, given I can't repeat a seven in any of these rows, the sevens in these rows must be in these eight cells. In other words, can this square be a seven? The answer is clearly no. It cannot be a seven because if it was, there would be a fourth seven in only three rows of the puzzle, which is too many. So, coming back to it, we can, we can say either this square is a seven, and if it's a seven, this is not a seven, or it's not a seven, in which case there is a swordfish on sevens, and the swordfish also eliminates the seven from this cell. So in fact, this is, this is a finned swordfish, isn't it? That's how we need to view it. I think that's, it's a long time since I've looked at finned fishes, but this is a finned fish. So the natural fish would be this swordfish. But here, the natural swordfish is actually impossible, but the fin swordfish still does the work for us. So, so that logic we've just applied to sevens, I can apply it identically to fours and ones. Let's try it. Let's just do it to make sure we understand. So either this is a four. If this is a four, that is not a four. Or it's not a four in which case the fours in these three columns would again be in those cells. And again, because of the swordfish logic that we ran through before, there couldn't be any more fours in row one, row six, and row nine than, than would appear in these eight cells outlined in blue. So this could not be a four. So again, the logic holds, and this square cannot be a four. So first, we've managed to prove it's not a seven, We've now proved it's not a four. If I ran the logic again, it wouldn't be a one either. So there would be no solution to the puzzle because this cell could not be filled. And what does this tell us about the orange cell? It tells us that this cell is not a one, four or a seven. If it, because if it is a one, four or a seven, we break this cell. So this square, if it's not a one, four or a seven, it must be a two. And that, I think, is what Shai wanted us to understand. And that is, I mean, it's it's barbarically clever. It really is. I mean, it's so, it's fiendish. It's absolutely fiendish. But, but, to be fair to Shai, there were, were the 36 digits that we were given here. And it's really clear what you have to look at. It, I mean, the moment I thought about the puzzle for any amount of time, I thought, wow, 
there's a lot of digits in the perimeters and the moment I saw I could only put one fours and sevens in the perimeter gaps it, it's just shouting at you it then took me ages to understand why this matters but it's really beautiful it's like a, a yeah there's like a floating mythical swordfish pattern that that arises and you've got to stop the mythical swordfish because the mythical swordfish even though it's a finned swordfish will break the puzzle and I, i'm hoping this just this is just going to finish the puzzle now we get a two and a nine there i can see that immediately um i don't know if that if that is going to be helpful isn't it that's going to give us a nine and a five and what we might find is now one in the middle box has to go there four has to go there and seven has to go there what we might find is because there are so many given digits that if you do get a few digits in this puzzle it might become very very pliable you can see that's that's a naked single five now this is a one four or a seven so we've got more ones fours and sevens gubbins going on um probably we should focus on the digits that are not ones fours and sevens at least initially because we know that there are very few ones, fours and sevens in the puzzle at all. Now, if we look down this column, look, this is an eight, nine pair now. So that's an eight and this is a nine and that's a nine. And now look along there. I bet it's one. No, it's not. It's one, four and five. So this, ah, that's a one or a four. So that's a five in the box. Uh, this is just a four. So that fixes the four and the one. And that's actually unwinding some of the, some of the swordfish stuff, isn't it? four comes out of both of those squares this square is now a given five this square should be a one or a seven um one four seven of course into these squares let's put it in and then see if we can eliminate anything we can get rid of the yeah we can place the four in fact now i've got a one seven in the column and that means i must put an eight somewhere that's got to go there which places an eight here. That seems to require that to be a one, that to be a four. Now I've got a one seven pair, which is just resolved. That square at the top becomes seven, one, four. Good grief. That square there has got to be a four. Um, this one is fixing the seven at the bottom. That gives me a one here and a seven here. And I think we're basically, we are basically done, aren't we? It does seem to have yielded its secrets once we understood how the the first bit worked so that's a three seven pair let's fill that in that's a three and we must need a one here and also a six that forces that to be a six we've got a seven a one and a seven maybe let's click tick yes absolutely brilliant and it didn't take me that long i guess 23 minutes to find i don't know what we're going to call this but Pato Pato. I should have looked up what that means. Does anyone know what Pato Pato means? <laughs> Shy's titles are never easy to uh, understand. I will say that. Um, but I'm not sure we're going to... I'm not sure this should be known as the Pato Pato technique. That's not very uh, revealing at all. I like the sort of mythical mythical floating swordfishes or something like that. Let me know in the comments what, what Shy's new technique should be should be named absolutely wonderful stuff as ever and we'll be back later with another edition of cracking the cryptic